So what we're doing here is um, just learning how to be natural, which might sound like a strange thing to do, but <laughs> I know for myself that um, I spent many, many years working out how to be natural, trying to come up with all of these strategies and all of these ideas about what it meant to be natural, i.e., you know, how, how should I be in the world? You know, what should I say? What should I do? Who should I be spending my time with? What kinds of things should I be spending my time doing? And um, from a very kind of immediate approach, you know, like what should I be doing right now to the sort of grand scheme of things, you know, what's it all about? What should I be spending my life doing? And, um, and trying to work this out from the perspective of um, analyzing and processing all of the ideas that I'd heard in my life, all of the concepts that I'd managed to accumulate along the way and all of the experiences I'd had and trying to fit it all together both in, in the sort of immediacy of what I was doing and in this grander scale. And it, it, it was just really, I was just completely confused, you know, really confused both in my day-to-day -day living and in this grand scale of, well, what, what's it all about? You know, what am I meant to be doing here? You know, what's going on? And, um, and I, I had some really good times, I had lots of fun, but even the fun was somehow tinged with this, this feeling that there must be something more to life than just having fun. And in terms of really feeling like I was able to contribute and to give everything that I was able to give. I just knew that I was just scratching the surface of my capacity, and my, my, my capability. But it was almost like I decided just to settle for that because I didn't know how to tap into what I, the, the, what I knew I was really capable of tapping into and of expressing in my life. And so this is the way that I'd lived for many, many years. And, um, and it was okay, you know, I was, I was very fortunate in many ways in my life, but when I was introduced to open intelligence, and the, the introduction is as simple as just to stop thinking for a moment. Just pause your train of thought right now, wherever you are. Allow yourself to notice this alertness by which everything is experienced. This intelligence that experiences the next thought that just appears spontaneously. Now when I was introduced to this, it was like being introduced to something that I was incredibly familiar with. It didn't seem like it was anything new. And yet, the way it was expressed in this training was so direct and so clear that it was almost impossible for me to, to ignore what was being suggested and what was being suggested that I test out for myself. With the simple instruction of taking short moments of just relaxing my mind and my body wherever I was, whenever I remembered, that was easy and allowing myself to notice this, this openness of perception, this intelligence that was always there, that was essential for any of my experience to be recognized. And then the suggestion is not just to take these short moments of noticing this, but to repeat this recognition many times. Until in my own experience I became certain that this open intelligence was always at the basis of my experience regardless of what I was experiencing. So, on a personal level, this was wonderful because it meant that all of the strategies that I'd had to work out what to do and what to say and to try and work out who I was, this, this whole idea of my identity and, and uh, just began to soften and relax and to lose their grip to inform my actions and my speech and what I was spending my time doing. And so by relaxing into this naturalness of being, 
there is this incredible ease around all situations. This ease of just allowing myself to be exactly as I was, with whatever was going on. If I was feeling happy, wonderful, I could just relax and allow that to be as it was. If I was feeling miserable, fantastic. I could relax and allow it to be as it was. Now that wasn't my experience at the beginning. That took a little while to train up, to see that I could also relax with these afflictive states. That none of them were a sign of anything, or evidence of anything, other than the natural presence of open intelligence. Regardless of all the stories I'd had about what they meant and where they come, came from and what I had to do about them, how to manage them, how to control them, <coughs> the different strategies of indulging, avoiding and replacing. So indulging is to, to make this big story about something, about an experience, about a thought or an emotion or a physical sensation. Just to continue to describe it in this really conventional, boring way that it, it's just like just noise if you like. You know, it's just like babbling and that, that's great, it's fun, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a problem but I began to see that, well is that actually how I want to spend my time? You know, do I really want to spend my time just just making this noise from my mouth? <laughs> You know, it's great, well yeah, okay, it's, that's fine, but I, I began to see that I actually had far more, um, far more incredible things that I could do with my speech, and that I could use my speech to really support and empower myself and other people to be the best that they could be. And this was far more interesting than just babbling away about anything that happened to pop into my into my mind stream. And so, avoiding things as well, I could see that in my life there had been so many things that I'd just avoided. You know, people, places and things that I'd just avoided because I was convinced that I, I didn't want them in my life. And this made life complicated, it, it meant that there were certain people that I had to avoid, certain groups of people that I really had to avoid certain places that I was convinced I didn't want to be in. And so it made life really complicated, you know, this, this kind of slalom through life of avoiding things and sort of going for other things and avoiding that one and oh God there's sadness, let's get away from that and just this complicated dance of, of, of really being tense and uptight. And, um, and then replacing other things. So when I felt sad trying to replace that with a, with a feeling that, that felt more pleasant, or a feeling that I thought I should be having, like happiness. So doing everything I, I could to change that sadness into happiness. <coughs> trying to work out, what, okay, what do I do, what do I do now, I, I feel sad, I don't like this, this shouldn't be there. Uh, what, how do I make myself happy? You know, what, what do I do? Do I, okay, maybe a glass of wine, or, you know, whatever it is, this, this whole strategy of trying to replace the <coughs> The, the particular datum, the particular experience that we're, we're having then. And in this way of living was so much tension, so much tension, so much fear, so much hope, fearing that some things would, would come up, some experiences, some emotions and thoughts, and desperately hoping that other ones would come instead. You know, there was so much tension. And I can see clearly in my own life and experience that this tension and this stress of living in this way really didn't contribute to my well-being on any level, mental, emotional or physical. And it was just so clear and I look back now and I can see that the times when I did get ill, this, this whole approach really didn't help me, first of all to have this well-being generally, but then when I was ill the whole story of being ill would just send me into this spiral of, of indulgence in being ill and misery and self-blame and self-pity and then and anger at the world and anger at all the healthy people and just madness. But this actually on a really practical level certainly didn't help me to, to get well again. So in open intelligence everything is included. 
all descriptions and all experiences. Whether you're describing yourself as, as being physically well or you're describing yourself as being physically unwell, both of those descriptions rest equally in this same open space, this same basic space. So first of all, there's an ease around all of these descriptions. You're not desperately trying to hold on to the description of perfect physical health, but neither are you completely destroyed as soon as any sign of ill health arises. But at the same time, what you also tap into is the intelligence to see exactly what you do need to do to look after yourself in a really practical way. So it's not taking up some extreme of saying, okay, well now I'm relying on open intelligence, I've got to be this, this really tough person and you know, take short moments with everything and not take any medicine. Or th There's this balanced view. We allow ourselves to feel everything and then we take appropriate action to the situation. It's just, this is, this, is, this is common sense. But most of the time from living this life of confusion in believing that all of these descriptions have this independent nature, just basic common sense isn't, isn't available. We find ourselves behaving and acting and saying things that are <coughs> just totally bizarre and, and not of benefit to anybody. And the indication of when you are deeply resting in your powers of, of great benefit and relying on this open intelligence is when your actions and everything you do and say is of, the benefit, for, is, is of benefit for all. And this is not some intellectual concept or another framework that we need to adopt and then try and reference our behaviour to this idea of what being of benefit all means. This is this clear seeing from this vantage that it's just vast and open like a cloudless sky where you see everything clearly about yourself, about everyone else and about everything that's going on. This vast intelligence that's limitless, that's your perspective. And from there the benefit of all is obvious without you needing to think about it or work it out. And when you know with complete certainty that your actions are of benefit to all, that's, it's just a beautiful way to live. And it's so obvious. It's really, really clear. But whilst you're gaining confidence, whilst we're training this up, it's wonderful to have someone that you can check in about this with. Someone that has this perspective. And this is why we recommend the relationship with a trainer. Just checking in with someone that has this, this broad perspective and you share your, your challenges and your successes and, and your questions with, with them and they will simply ensure that your actions really are of benefit to all. And that's amazing, what an incredible <coughs> support that is. Just to have a, a friend that you can check these things in with and they'll probably say wonderful, fantastic or perhaps they'll say maybe you could think about it like this. But It's just having this, this, this guy that can just take you gently by the hand and, and really empower you to see that you have this capacity to use your, your, your incredible life to, to be of benefit to all. And I know that that is what I'd always wanted. I'd always wanted that, to live a life that was of benefit to myself and everybody else. And that's, that's for me is what taking it all the way means doing whatever is necessary to ensure that my life expresses that in whatever way I'm able to. And I see that the more support I take, the more advantage I take of the support network of the Four Mainstays, the, the more obvious that becomes in my life and the more clear I am about the way that I can contribute my innate strengths, gifts and talents, my unique aptitudes in life. And I'm, I'm just so amazed and grateful for that and it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a great way to live, so natural, so easy because this is our natural state. The natural state is, is, of, is, is of the desire to be of complete benefit to yourself and everybody and it makes everything easy. Decisions flow seamlessly, actions flow seamlessly, speech flows seamlessly, all experience flows in this seamless flow completely indivisible, completely inseparable, 
completely wide open and free. And that's what you're getting to know about yourself and your own experience. And the four mainstays are the way to go. That, that, that is what will ensure that this becomes increasingly obvious to you in your life and everything about you and everything about your life. So just keep going. Keep training this up.